Morning! So today I want to talk about distractions with you because they are everywhere and I feel like they're more everywhere than ever while working from home. I just filmed the video all about feeling good about working from home or feeling good about yourself while working from home and then I thought I need to talk about distractions. I will finalize my training for a financial advisor team talking about time management and productivity. That's what I do, by the way. I'm a success coach, if you didn't know. And I have prepared two slides for email management and basically preventing email distractions as well as phone in general and people. And I thought I could share those with you as well and you'd really enjoy it. So here we go. Let's talk about emails, shall we? I think there are two problems with emails. One, they're a big distraction if you don't know how to prevent that. And two, it's hard to manage them, really hard. Especially if you're an entrepreneur, don't have any admin people working for you, or you just happen to have a lot of emails coming in. So tip number one about preventing email distractions. Have inbox zero times dedicated in your ideal day schedule, which we will talk about in the upcoming video. So make sure that you're subscribed, but let me go back to it. It's basically assigning an hour-ish every morning just to answer your inboxes. I'm not just talking about emails. I do WhatsApp, WhatsApp Business, Discord, Zoom, emails, all the 18 email accounts I have with my different businesses. Every single email I manage in that one hour every morning and I try to bring them to inbox zero. And what it means is if something brings a task, I'm not going to mark that email unread. I'm going to create that task in my Google Calendar because I do time blocking. Back to the topic. One hour, I set a kitchen timer. I don't go over it. If there is something left, I can always check it tomorrow. 24 hours is anyway a good time to get back to a message. And generally, I get back to the emails that come in first. So still very manageable. If it's not enough for you, you can add another half an hour in the afternoon or before you finish work. But definitely only that hour, the inbox zero time, and no time other than that. I literally close that email the, the mail app, I don't check my emails, I just don't, it's not there. It's once a day and not again. And that brings me to my second point, one touch policy. Let me know if you ever, ever, ever went to your phone while you were giving a break or just working and then you're like, oh, let me check my, my mail app. And then you go, you see there is a new email and you go and you read that and either it creates a task for you or it's something that you need to reply to, but you don't want to type on your phone. So what you end up doing is you read it, you mark it unread, and then you go, go back to work. The problem with that is, first of all, you know what's in there. So you will probably procrastinate reading that mail again, and that will be unread in your inbox for days and days and days, if that's nothing urgent. And that is not just one email, there's gonna be many, many, many of those ones. And the second problem is you just wasted your time because you didn't have an intention of answering that email. If you don't have the intention of answering emails, don't read the emails. One touch policy. If it's open, if it's read, it's gonna be answered or the task will be added to Google Calendar or whatever you're using. If not, don't touch it. Who can relate with that? I know I can. Inbox pause. This is an incredibly useful, an incredibly useful add-on for Outlook, but I know that there are other, you know, add-ons similar to that. It's literally one button that you click to pause all emails from pouring into your inbox. They're still delivered, don't get me wrong, but unless you click that, everything is paused in the air in the cloud that that cannot bother you. It's great for distractions. So if you are, if you cannot control yourself and you still go back checking your emails, do your inbox zero and then click that button, just pause all emails from coming in until you are ready to do emails. And did I say when you're doing emails, don't do the tasks? Just, just making sure that you remember that. And the last one about emails is to create rules. When I mean rules, it's literally the mail rules that you can put in in your mail program. And that is, especially if you're doing the inbox pause or anything similar to that. And what I mean by that rules is 
if you have to answer emails coming from a certain person immediately, maybe your boss, maybe your biggest client, or maybe the bank, I don't know, um, you can actually set a rule saying, when an email comes from this person directly to me, make this sound. Or if an email has the word urgent, important, please answer ASAP, blah, blah, blah. Make this sound so that you know when emails come in with that sound, you need to check it. If you don't hear the sound, you don't have to check it. I think it's quite handy, especially if you're if you're someone who's like, but I, it's, my, it's part of my job, I need to be on my emails all the time. Well, no, you don't. No, you don't. So there you go, emails. Let's move on to the phone bit. What I'm talking about is giving a break or not even giving a break, but just grabbing your phone for no reason at all, just felt like it because it became a habit, turning on Instagram or your guilty pleasure app, just scrolling, just scrolling for no reason. And then you're like, 30 minutes, what? Use app blockers, use app blockers. Actually, the Apple phone, well, wow, that was, that was new, iPhone <laughs> has that. I think it's in screen time, and then you can have, yep, in the screen time you can have here, this one, this one, it says app limits, and you can say, do not let me go on Instagram between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., and it does, it works. There you go. I think it's such a smart idea to have these limits on your phone if you cannot control yourself, which I'm sure you can. It's just a matter of habit. By the way, I just realized that my phone is not on silent silent. Let's put it there because that's where it is always. And this brings me to my second point when it comes to phone distractions. I keep my phone on silent and I have my call times. I take calls between certain hours. Other than that, if somebody calls me, I'm sorry, I'm not there. Unless I take a break, I check my phone on the break and see if there is anything urgent. And if I feel like it, and if it's urgent, I'll get back to that person. But other than that, I have certain call times and I share that very openly with my business partners, with my family, with my friends because I cannot do deep work if I answered every single call as they come in. I'm not a responsive person and I'm very proud of that because if I was responsive to everything that's happening around me and in my life, I'm not controlling my time. Everything happening is controlling my time and I don't have unlimited time. So I have decided that I'm not taking calls 24 seven. That's another one. I highly recommend it. Again, if your job is actually you answering phone calls, that might be a little bit trickier, but you can maybe still say, just two hours a day, I'm not gonna take calls. Between 10 and 12, I'm not taking calls, and do some deep work there, you know? You don't have to do this like the whole day like I do. If the phone calls are a big part of your business or your life, and you're okay with that, you don't see them as distractions, then just assign a couple of hours a day, not answering. You get the gist of it. Ooh, this is a very, very cool one. So I have WhatsApp, the regular one on my phone, with my Swiss number, because we were living in Switzerland before we moved to the UK. Then I got my UK number, and my phone asked me, do you want to transfer all your contacts and your conversations to your new WhatsApp or new number? And I was like, no because I don't want to, you know, tell everyone that I've changed it or whatever. So I kept it. But then I was thinking, I, I should have a WhatsApp account with my UK number because people who get my business card want to text me on WhatsApp. Then I was like, can I download WhatsApp business on the same phone and use it with a second number? I can, you can too. So I have two WhatsApp accounts, one for business, one for personal. Personal, I check on my personal hours. Business, I check in my business hours. Perfect work-life balance and boundary. But also, in the WhatsApp business, if you didn't know already, you can have an autoresponder thingy, but also you can have, let me go to business tools, an away message, a greeting message, quick replies, that's what I meant, labels and stuff like that. My away message is what is the best thing that happened to me on WhatsApp. And it, it's basically, 
Thank you, I'm not available, I got your message, I'll get back to you. Which makes that other person receiving the message feel really good because they just got an answer. And it also has my Calendly booking link. If you're contacting me to book a success call with me or a one-to-one -one or a meeting, please use this link. Don't send me an email. Let's save us the time back and forth emailing. Book my time from my link and I didn't even check my phone. There is an event on my calendar, a business meeting set up without me doing anything. Use WhatsApp business. It's awesome. And the last one, I think, about the phone I mean, this is the most important one, put it away. If your business or your workday doesn't involve, or your study time, checking your phone or checking an app, which I definitely not recommend, if it doesn't involve that, put it away somewhere where you cannot reach and grab it with a move, like just one move. What I mean is, when I'm working here, there is my iPhone charger and I cannot reach it. My, my arms are not that long. So I have to get up and move. And as I get up, I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I reaching for my phone? Do I really need it? And I stop and I sit back. It prevents me from grabbing my phone and going on Instagram. Another one, if that doesn't work for you, put it in a drawer. If that doesn't work for you, put it in another room. You'll take regular breaks anyway. You'll take a break every one, one and a half hours. You can check your phone then. Other than that, put it away. It felt like I needed to sit down for this. People, people distractions, especially when you're working from home or when you're studying, people will come and talk to you. And the only way to prevent that is clear communication. I was just working out yesterday here and my husband came in here a couple of times to help me out and I was like, this is breaking me. Can you please not? And they understand, interestingly. But what I found that worked the best, especially for my clients, is to ask this very simple question when your significant other or someone in the house comes to you asking, did you feed the dog by the way? Oh, did you order toilet paper by the way? This is, this is the answer. If I was at the office right now, or if I was at school right now, or if I was not at home working outside right now, would you call me for this? If the answer is no, please put it on a post-it. We'll talk after 6 p.m. If it's yes, well, yeah, tackle it then. You know what, 95% of the time, it's a no. It's not necessary, it's just the convenience that they can ask you at the time that completely breaks the flow and takes maybe 20, maybe 30 minutes off of your time because of the concentration bit and everything. Tell them, if you wouldn't call me normally for something like this, please don't tell me here, I'm not here. I am not here. If that doesn't work, sound cancelling headphones. Awesome. Somebody comes into your office or your designated workspace and you're like, Am I mean? No. Does it work? Yes. Then it, is it worth it? Yep. So there you go. This is how you prevent three types of distractions while you're working or studying from home. If you liked it, make sure that you like and maybe join the family. No, definitely join the family. Please hit that subscribe button. I can talk more about being focused. Are you interested in seeing that? I can talk more about procrastination and getting focused on that one thing and finding motivation to work on that one thing and not worrying about all your to-do list items. I can talk about these things. Are you interested in that? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get that conversation going in the comment section and thank you so much for watching. I wish you all very planned, very successful and very happy days. Mwah.